Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video. I just went to my local thrift store, um, which I haven't really done for a little while, but uh, I looked through their electronic stuff and I found some stuff from a bank, oddly enough. And you can see here, this is one of these um, Verifone uh, like card readers uh, from Union National Bank. And it has this like rubber coating for all the buttons and stuff like that. And yeah, this is a credit card reader. And... It would plug in, I guess, to their telephone system so it can check the um, the card to make sure that it's, um, you know, valid and active and all that. There seems to be some, like, DIN-like connectors, I guess, to interface with the computer and then the power supply input. And oddly enough, this guy wasn't very cheap. It was, like, 9 bucks. Uh, but it has this really nice uh, alphanumeric VFD display, which I actually do want to see if I can use for a project. But I've never... Uh, opened one of these before and I want to see what these security measures are now the way that I think I understand how these work um, it does actually I, I believe store at some point um, the cards that are scanned into it in, into like some kind of SRAM inside and to prevent you from uh, well to prevent someone who wants to steal the information from getting that information uh, I believe that there should be some security features like uh, switches. As soon as you unscrew it, it'll um, force an erase of the SRAM chip and all this other stuff to prevent people from tampering. Now, this has, um, this was well before um, they have like the chips in the card. So there's actually a magnetic stripe reader on the side here. There's no chip functionality. This does look to, um, to date it around, uh, let's see if it has it written. I'm thinking like mid 90s, something like that. Let's just peel this sticker up carefully. Now, I was actually surprised to see this. They had a couple of printers as well, like ink ribbon printers. And I opted not to get any of those. Um, Cause I was actually more interested in this guy, but yeah, there's serial number one. I'm surprised this wasn't destroyed whenever this, the bank that owned this, uh, sold it off or whatever, I guess that's the only way I could think that the thrift store would happen to get one of these. Um, you would figure they would destroy it, but I guess not. Uh, yeah, there's no date code that I can really see. So yeah, I don't I don't know. It might be late nineties, something like that, who knows? Anyway, uh let's just see if we can get in there. And I eventually do want to reuse the VFT because it looks really nice. It's a 16 uh digit, let's see. Looks like a 14 segment, not a 16. Uh but anyway, there's just some regular old screws on the bottom, which is kind of weird, and some wall mounting holes, interestingly enough. So I'm just gonna go and see if we can open this and I think that's there's no hidden screws hopefully it doesn't look like it oh yeah there are little clips on the side towards the back I guess and there we go and it just popped right off it's really nothing on the inside there it's a little dusty and we're right in and Interestingly enough, I don't see like any, in some newer devices, it'll actually be like a flat flex mesh um, that's like printed on the plastic that just open, opening the device will break one of the traces or if you try to drill in uh, to avoid unscrewing it. And usually there's like a like a switch that's held down by the, the lid. So when you go to open it, it'll erase. I don't see any security mechanism so far, which is rather surprising but yeah like the layout and everything looks like a lot of through holes some surface mount so yeah i think this does place it around mid 90s mid to late 90s it looks like there's some uh 7400 series logic up in here and some uh, national semiconductor chips as well st micro but yeah let's see if we can pry this up I don't see any screws or anything so I think it just pops open from here there we go there's some kind of socket it just disengaged and yeah there's a 0.1 inch pin header to the front board so there's actually two boards and yeah there's a 
little uh, CR 2032 coin cell battery. And this is what's going to keep the data in the SRAM chip alive. But yeah, wow, there's actually kind of a lot in here, interestingly enough. Uh, near the power circuitry, there's a um, TO220 package. It's a L387A. That's going to be your regulator. And there's actually like a metal plate that's vertically mounted that's uh, screwed to that. And that's going to act as a heat sink. That's, that's your input regulator. And there's some diodes um, for protection, I'm guessing, either for the DC side, for reverse polarity, and possibly for the... Um, the I.O. ports here. The big honking cap here. Uh, it's a, a like a inline design one. Interesting. It's uh, Forever. It's the brand. It's a uh, 2200 microfarad 16 volts. That's interesting. And then we have some radial. Just uh, regular caps there. And these are also branded Forever. I've never heard of that cap brand. Forever. Don't know if they last forever. Anyway, we have a crystal here, and this is a uh, 7.159 megahertz. Yeah, 15909. And we have some, what are these? Xilog parts. So these are going to be kind of the processing a CPU. Yeah. So this is essentially like an 8 bit computer, essentially. Uh, so you have your Z80 CPU, that's a very well known CPU. You have your PIO, which is a peripheral input-output port. I, I guess it, it handles I.O. A Z80 Dart, I'm guessing another type of interface chip, maybe for communications or something like that. We have a CTC. That's interesting. I wonder if they're implementing any, like, uh, well, they obviously have to implement some kind of... Um, like cryptography or encoding or something like that. Um, I wonder if they're doing that in software or is it maybe like one of these chips handles that. And we have the e squared prom. There's a sticker with a date code for the firmware revision. Um, this is just going to be one of these quartz windowed memories. So all the bits are going to go bye bye. <laughs> Once I peel, well, not immediately after I peel this off, but eventually, yeah, you can see there. Has a little window, and you can actually see the chip, and you shine UV light on there with enough energy, and it'll wipe the data. So that contains the firmware. Here we have a, I believe it's it's a M5 M5 256CP dash uh, 70 LL. That appears to be like a RAM chip because the dash 70 LL is the um, I guess a latency, access latency. So it's uh, 70 uh, nanoseconds, I guess, for reads and writes. Something like that. I'd have to look up the data sheet to know. There's an Oki part here. It's M6242B. And this is probably, I'm going to guess, one of these is going to likely be the SRAM just because of proximity to this. You can actually probably tell based off of what it's wired to. The positive lead goes down to this diode, which goes to this chip. So this chip is going to be your SRAM. Uh, this other chip here has its own crystal, 11.0592 megahertz. And I'm not really sure what that does right off the top of my head. Um, it looks like a couple of traces go off to the top here and wire to maybe the PIO, somewhere like that. Uh, we have actually some optical isolation um, because there are two like phone lines. So we have number one, the transformer here, and it's just going to be like a common mode. Um, we have some like metal oxide uh, protection uh, devices here. We have uh, photo interrupters and likely another one, NEC. And this guy is a uh, read relay. It's in this very weird dip package. And we have some ferrite beads, some diodes, some other uh, ceramic cap capacitors. So yeah, it's actually pretty interesting. This is pretty much all, well, this is all the logic. The front board just contains the, um, the VFD, probably a chip to control it, and some other 
I.O. stuff for the keypad. And yeah, this is the other interface header that goes off to the keypad. I, I actually wonder, this might this chip might actually be like a microprocessor that handles um, the keypad because it's right next to, you know, the traces for that. Who knows? Anyway, uh, we actually have some interesting um, sort of grid um, mesh ground planes here. And if you saw my recent video I did on um, on capacitive touch sensing boards I designed, it's very similar to that, though this is a much tighter pitch. We have a really big um, piezo speaker. Yeah. Uh, right at the top here, and this is made by, uh, let's see, Bougion? Never heard of it. Yeah, that's actually quite a big buzzer. Uh, we have some more 7400 series logic, ST micro. We have a quad op amp, a TL074C from Texas Instruments. And it looks like we have a dead bug of some sort. Yo. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, all the all the even the surface mount parts are all um, 1206, so they're they're massive. Got some really big capacitors on here too. You can tell this was uh, looks like it it was wave reflowed. Um, it was double load, so they actually put glue. So on this bottom side, they glued the chips down before reflowing them. This might not have been wave actually. This might have been um, I don't know, hard to tell because I'm I'm not seeing like an error for the direction of uh, sending it through the wave uh, machine, and I'm not seeing like the obligatory teardrop shape end pads to prevent um, like solder pulling. So yeah, interestingly enough, the EEPROM is actually socketed. It's the only part that is. Because if they ever needed to upgrade something or whatever. Got lots of capacitors right behind the VFD and some diodes and what appears to be a transformer. It's one of these weird circular transformers with many pins coming out. Uh, that'll be for generating the bias voltages, probably as well as the uh, filament drive. And... <clears throat> Obvious, we got a relatively large ship under here. That's going to be the VFD driver. And we have kind of what I'm interested in. It, the uh, card reader is mounted kind of uh, separately from here. So let's actually just unplug that and get the front board off. It's actually interesting. I like to bring up, they actually have uh, silk screening for the PCBA part number and revision number. This is revision K. And so obviously this is not an early revision. They, they keep reiterating. And even on the display board, uh, it says it's revision D. Um, it's a second side, gives a part number. And yeah, pretty interesting. It does look like there is a date code on this front board. It says 9509, so ninth month of 95 so yeah this puts it square in mid 90s uh let's see if the other board has a marking this one says uh 28th week of 95 so yeah both boards were um mid 90s so i was pretty spot on with my guess so let's just pull this board off which will have the vfd and the button matrix and yeah just uses one of these membrane button pads nothing special about that we do have an oki uh let's see it's a c1937 something oh one uh, this is definitely going to be the vfd controller so we can see uh the way that the traces are arranged going to all these resistors that'll be going wired to the vfd does look like there's some dust, but the VFD looks in very good physical condition. I uh, wonder, hopefully, all the uh, elements aren't burnt out. So I'll just grab, I have a uh, UV flashlight. Let's just see if it fluoresces. Oh, yes. So the phosphors still work, at least. Um, 
and the evacuation stem looks okay. It doesn't look like it was banged up. So hopefully the vacuum is still inside and it still works. But yeah, that looks fantastic. Okay. So yeah, we have our button matrix and let's just see. Yeah, these are it's just literally tied in a matrix. So probably row and column red. Uh, this board's Rev B, like I noted. We got some more Forever caps. <laughs> and these other ones are... What is that? Scion? Can't tell if that's a P or an L. <laughs> I never heard of that brand either. Very interesting. Wow, that's weird. Uh, this, this little um, through-hole transistor actually has like a heat sink sticking out of it. I've never seen that. I've seen this package before without the extra bit sticking out there. Hopefully, let's see. There you go. See, it has like a little hat on. That's that's weird. That guy is a... Uh, looks like National Semi. It's marked 524NB313 and then Y underneath that. We have the transformer, which is heat trunk. That is CXF uh, 0001 GCI 9524, so 24th week of 95. That was manufactured. We got some more caps there. And yeah, there's really not that much on this board. Uh, just pretty much display, and that's it. And the VFDs kind of just flapping. I'm actually a little surprised. It's just the pins at the bottom that are holding it on. I almost wonder would this power up if we uh, find a suitable supply. This just uses a barrel jack. Might give that a try. Uh, it might have. It, realistically, I would assume that the bank, if they didn't destroy it, they sure as heck would have to have uh, deactivated it. So it might not even power on after the fact. And I don't think. Yeah, there's no legend as to what voltage. We can guess by the filter cap values near here, and I'll, I'll try to power that up in a second. Uh, we have... <sighs> wow, that, that screw was in there very tightly. Yeah, these screws are actually... I think they're thread-locked to prevent... So they No, actually, no, they're just in metal inserts, and they're very tightly in there to prevent anyone from tampering, I guess. There's this uh, leaf spring sort of back plane. Let's see. Yeah. It's pretty much to provide support. And the head is actually mounted on like another kind of springy board and Interestingly enough, it's just kind of slid in there. It's not permanently attached. And the head pretty much looks just like a, uh, it looks exactly, in fact, like a, um, like a audio cassette uh, head. This one only has, uh, you know, a single head. And the shell is grounded. But yeah, it, it, you know, you could probably use this to read an audio cassette, but only in mono, obviously. Yeah, and there's really nothing else in there. That's just held compliance that when you um, insert a card, it'll uh, kind of have a little bit of spring and give. So I'm going to get this guy back together and see if we can fire it up and if it does anything at all. Oh yeah, another interesting thing is uh, the VFD has this nice uh, filter sort of is gray uh, to make higher contrast. The buttons themselves aren't anything special. They're just sitting in there, kind of. One other thing I forgot to mention, there's actually molded into the plastic um, manufacturer date codes, and it looks like, yeah, it's 95, seventh month. And that says one and then two. 
I don't know if that's like the day. And yeah, just another quick note, the reason why you need this transformer for the VFD is um, most VFDs require higher voltages. Uh, this is going to be a multiplex tube just because it doesn't have like a million pins coming out the back. Uh, so you're going to probably require for this tube anywhere from like 40 to 60 volts uh, multiplexed uh, in order to light it up. So that's why they use like a switching transformer to generate the higher voltage necessary. I almost wonder if this um, connector here, uh, maybe there's like a loop or something that if this is unplugged, like you go to separate the boards that it would um, wipe the SRAM. There has to be something. I can't believe that you could just open this and uh, get access to the SRAM without any trouble. I have a very hard time believing that. And interestingly enough, I forgot to mention, there's actually molding inside the plastic for each of the cords to have it wrapped down the bottom. So if it's hung on the wall, cords exit the bottom instead of the top. It's actually interesting. Uh, so yeah, let's... Um, I'm going to grab... I have this board here, which... Um, is just a DC DC boost converter. And I think I have it set to around, let's see, nine volts right now. And I just have a uh, little um, female leads. I can plug this into like a lipo to chart or to provide power. Let's just see if this does anything at all because the size is correct. Polarity might be backwards, so, but we'll see. It looks like there's plenty of protection. Um, diodes on the input side anyway, so even if we get it backwards, it shouldn't blow. But let's just see. It actually turns on. You can see it's not very bright. I'm going to have to turn off the lights. It flashed some information, and actually the real-time clock looks like it is running, so it thinks it's Sunday, um, 4, 4, 3.23 p.m. It looks like maybe some of the f segments are kind of faded. Yeah, let me power cycle that again. So, yeah, this is running off of 9 volts just fine. So let's just let it reset. It looks like some kind of activation code popped up at the beginning. TZ330, HT, whatever. And then the clock should... And let's, is that actually accurate? Uh, my clock says it's about 3 p.m. right now. So maybe, and it is Sunday actually, as the time of filming. So this actually might be almost correct, but it's not 3.30. It's like closer to 3.05. Yeah, it actually does power on. It actually looks brighter on camera than to my eyes in real life. But actually, it looks like the longer I'm letting this run, the brighter the segments are getting. So maybe there is something needs to be uh, burned in again or something. But yeah, that, that VFD is beautiful. Definitely going to use that for a project. <laughs> yeah, it does power on. I really have no use for a card reader, obviously, like this. And this is probably not, it won't even work likely anymore. It's probably been deactivated. And it's probably so old that they probably do... Uh, these um verifications over like ip over internet now probably nothing uses phone lines anymore for credit cards so i couldn't use this like in an actual application yeah it's actually really interesting yeah that'll be my uh my picture my thumbnail the function question mark not programmed Function, not programmed. Clear reset does nothing. Backspace, alpha. 
multi-trans, I guess multiple transactions, clear. Terminal setup, enter one through nine or pound. Roll print, oh wow, you can actually access, that's interesting. I can actually access um, all the settings and stuff. That was what, nine? And two is, come on, idle prompt, beep equals zero, zero equals yes, dial type, PRI PHB it looks like maybe the segments out hopefully not um, I'm not sure what that is that's interesting timeout Post dial, reversal, not found, seven, not found, eight, not found. Okay, so there's maybe a couple different ranges. Come on, just let me, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's actually, recall what? That's interesting. Oh yeah, I can hear it beeping very lowly. I'm, I'm guessing maybe nine volts is a little too low. It just barely works, but yeah, maybe 12 volts if I bump this up, uh, it'll be brighter. I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> there. Enter password. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> nope, no merchant ID. Yeah, so they wiped it obviously. Yeah, that's that's fascinating. Memory dialer. Anyway, yeah, I've rambled on for quite a long time, and I'm sure this video has ran its course. So anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this really random teardown um, tinkering video, I guess you could call it. And uh, if you like me buying random stuff to take apart, uh, just let me know. Um, and I will continue searching thrift stores and whatnot to see if I can find anything that I think would be interesting to, to take a look at. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.